What's up guys, Gary with self.dev. In this video, we are gonna go over three projects that you can make to improve your developer skill set. Now these are more basic projects, so maybe you've been learning for like two, three, four, five months, you're just getting into JavaScript, and you're like, all right, cool, where do I go from here? What do I build next to get closer to getting a job? That's kind of what we're gonna go over. We're not like rebuilding Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, just basic fun projects you can make. So let's get going. First one here is going to be a JavaScript clock. All these projects are available on selftaught-dev.com. It's in the description, um, but watch this video first because we're gonna kind of go over what these projects are first. So this one, JavaScript clock, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you're gonna make this tick by second by second. It's gonna highlight the current day. So if it's Monday, you're gonna highlight Monday, Wednesday, highlight Wednesday, Friday, you're gonna highlight Friday. And then lastly, we're gonna have a click event on these, and then you're gonna be able to switch back and forth between 12 hour and 24 hour time, like this, or military time, or standard time. I'm not sure what the proper term for 24 or 12 hour time is, honestly. But you're gonna make a button where they can switch back and forth. And then there's also gonna be a tablet mock-up and then a mobile mock-up. So make sure you make this responsive as well. Now, one of the biggest things that was an issue for me when I was building projects was I would get a project and I would say, all right, cool, this is, this is an awesome project, I wanna build this, where do I start? And then I'd sit there for like 10 minutes and just like get on Instagram and procrastinate and then go back to the project and be like, yeah, I still don't know where to start, Instagram some more. So one of the big things that helped me get through that was breaking down the project into smaller steps. Now this might not be that big of a project, so you might not run into it. Maybe this is something that happens to you on future projects. But this is what I did that helped a lot with that problem, and it's breaking it down into smaller steps. It's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That old cliche saying, how do you build a JavaScript clock one line of code at a time? It's my quote. self taught dev. March 28th, 2021. All right. Uh, anyway, so maybe you break this down into the step one is getting the current time to appear on the screen. So maybe you even just have like an HTML element with the current time in it. Step two would be using JavaScript to update that time to the current time and have that line run every second. So maybe you're using set timeout to increment that or uh, update that every second. And then step three would be seeing what the current day is in that date object and making giving that element the class active so it's highlighted like this. And then step three is making the ability to switch back and forth between 12 and 24 hour time. So you have on click event listeners on these and if the user clicks on this, it switches to this and if the user clicks on that one, it switches back. So. Long story short, break the project down into smaller steps. If you ever get stuck, or if you're like, I don't know what to do next, try breaking it down. And then you can also come hop in Discord and ask me questions about it or ask other developers questions about it in there as well. So that is project number one. Project number two is gonna be cliche, but it's a to-do list. Uh, whenever you're learning a new language, one of the greatest things you can do is learn how to do the create, read, update, delete functions in that language, the CRUD app, or the, some, so build some basic CRUD app is what I'm saying. And a to-do list covers all your bases there. You're creating new entries, new to-do list items. You're reading those because when the page loads, you have to read the data to render the to-do list items. You're updating them if you have an edit button and then you're deleting them if you have an X button to delete the objects or the elements. So on this one, you're gonna build a to-do list that looks like this. Also focus on functionality before looks, and you can customize these, make them look however you want, but focus on getting the JavaScript functionality down first. The styles can come second, but the user is gonna be able to click here to add an item. It, when it loads, it should have four or five items, so it shouldn't be empty when it initially loads. Um, when you click here, they should be able to type in a thing and then press enter or click add item, and it should add it to the list here. They should be able to click edit, and then this should turn into an input with that item as placeholder text so that they can edit that and change that to whatever they want or an input field with that text in it, not placeholder, you know what I mean. Uh, they should be able to edit this and click save to update the item. And then they should also be able to click X to mark it off and delete that item if they've completed it. Now there are different levels to some of these projects. For example, this one, level one would be you load these by default and then the user can add items. 
Level two would be we incorporate local storage or um, yeah local storage probably, and the you, you save the user's to do list in local storage. So if they close out of the browser and come back, the to do list items would still be there. Versus if you don't save in local storage, if you close out and load it again, it would be just the default list you have when the code runs. So level two is going to be figure out how to use local storage to save the items in the browser's local storage. All these projects have a little readme that come with them as well. Um, so like level one, these are the requirements for that. Level two, we just wanna use local storage. Level three, you we're gonna take this up a notch. We're gonna turn this into a full stack app. So level three, you want to build a server or an API or just use serverless functions on Netlify. And you're gonna let your to-do list talk to the server or just hit the serverless function endpoints. And then those are going to talk to a database. It can be SQL, it can be MongoDB. If you use MongoDB Atlas, you can host it for free or have like a free instance of the database there. That's what I did when I made this. I was hosted on Heroku. I had a node server I built and that was on Heroku. So the to-do list would talk to my node server. The server would talk to my database on MongoDB Atlas and that's where the to-do list items were stored. So level three, we're gonna connect it to a server and a database and store the to-do list items in a database. We've got more on how to do that, more details on that, and stuff that you can use in the readme on this project. Again, these are available on self.dev.com. If you wanna go download them, I made these mock-ups, so feel free to use them if you like them or don't, whatever. That's level three of this project. And then again, if you have any questions on these, feel free to come hop in Discord. Link to that is down below. And you can ask me questions and I will help you out on these projects as much as I can, if I have time. Now, level or the last project here is gonna be a stock quote app. So in this one, level one, we're basically just talking to an API to get stock quotes. There is an API called Alpha Vantage. I think the limit on that is you can only send five requests per minute, but you can make an API key and five requests per minute is plenty to build, get the app working and build a practice project with it. So when it loads by default, it should get IBM's most recent stock data. You're gonna have the open, the close, the high, the low, and the trading volume for the day. Um, you should be using the daily stuff on this as well. We don't want you to do like minute or hourly. I think the daily stuff was the free endpoint as well. So just use the daily stuff on that. And then the user needs to be able to search here and they could search like TSLA or APPL and get stock information for those as well. And then there's also gonna be tablet and mobile mockups. So again, make sure this is responsive as well. That's level one for this one. Level two, what is level two for this one? Let's see, use D3 chart.js chart or some chart library to display a line graph. So when you hit the endpoint, it sends back the past like 30 or 40 days of data. So you're gonna get the close in the last 30 days and you're gonna chart that on a line graph using D3 or charts.js and basically generate a line graph of the stock's price over the past 30 days or 40 days, however long it goes back. So that's level two. Level three, we are gonna turn it into a candlestick chart. Uh, if you don't know what a candlestick chart is, you, it's basically this right here. It's these little candlesticks. So green one means it closed higher than it opened. Red one means it opened lower, higher than it closed. Um, basically, you'll do some research to figure out what candlestick charts are, because we're not gonna get super into that. That's not what this video is about. But level three, you're gonna turn this into a candlestick chart and replace your line graph with that. So that is project number three. And then there's tablet and mobile mockups on that as well. So those are three practice projects that you can build to improve your developer skill set. Hope this helps you guys out, gives you some ideas of some stuff you can make. There's a lot more on selftot-dev.com. Again, that link is in the description. If you wanna go there, you can download these mockups or just use the video as ideas. Um, if you download the mockups, you need to get Adobe XD. That's free from Adobe. And you can see all the projects just like I am here. And then also make sure you can hop in Discord if you do do these projects. You can ask questions if you ever get stuck or anything like that and need help. And I will be happy to try and help you out. I think that's about it for this one. One last thing, if you wanna get my resume template, the one I used when I was applying for a job before I had any tech experience. So this is basically just 
my resume with no tech experience on it, no previous job experience, what it looked like. If you want that, link for that is in the description as well. And I uh, think that's about it. So I will see you next time. Peace. Round one.